So your second differential equation, you can't even solve it. Let's write it again. Minus kx equals m x double dot. We can't solve it because we can't integrate. We can't integrate it with respect to time because we don't know what x is. x is what we're looking for. This is the, the fundamental problem we have. So this is why differential equations is hard, is the way you solve it sometimes is not that mathematical. The way you solve this, believe it or not, is that you guess. Now your math professor may not want to call it guessing. They may say you're going to construct a solution. Or theoretical physicists like to say, we're going to start with the following onsatz. Okay, well onsatz is just German for guess. It means outset in German. So really, nobody wants to admit it, but this is what we're doing. And if somebody had told me this when I took differential equations, I would have done a lot better. Okay, so let's guess. And what do I mean by guess? Well, just look at the thing and say, what, what would fit? We have a function equal to its own derivative, second derivative. Okay? What function equals its own second derivative to within a bunch of constants, right? So constants can come and go, but what function fundamentally is equal to its own second derivative? Well, you could just start naming all kinds of functions. So there's the line y equals mt plus b, and I'm saying time here because we're doing this with respect to time. What if you took two derivatives of the line function? Well, you'd get zero, right? It's not equal to its own second derivative. So let's think, what functions do we know that are? Well, one would be sinusoids, right? We know when you take the derivative of sine, you get cosine. When you take the derivative of cosine, you get negative sine. Right, so the second derivative of a sine is getting back to a sine, and with some constants and negative signs flying around. So one would be that x equals a sine bt plus c. And I'm loading it up with constants to make it real general. Okay? Uh, we know we have to end up with constants when we do these kinds of problems to, to match the initial conditions, so I'm putting in a lot of constants. Another one, two, if sine does it, then cosine also does it. If you have cosine here, Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, so it gets back to cosine. So we could also write a cosine bt plus c. Let's see, what other function does it? x equals the exponential function, right? e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Take another derivative, it's still e to the x. Right? So exponential functions do this. We could write a nice general exponential function, a, e, to the bt plus c. And that would also follow the rule. That's another good guess. There's another guess, number four. This is the easiest one that everyone overlooks. What function, what's left, it's so hard. Zero, right? the constant zero. If you have zero here, you take two derivatives of zero and you still get zero. Those are sort of the fundamental four uh, good guesses. Now, when I teach this class on campus, I bring five students down to the front, and I make them start to think of what they are, and whoever gets one first gets to sit down. So eventually I get through the four, and there's one person left, and I really sweat them for about two minutes, really think, and then I let them go, because there isn't a fifth one. But I like to do that, because you never know. They're really smart students. They might come up with some new fundamental one that, that we never heard of before. Anyway, these are the four. Right now we're just gonna play with sign, okay? So I said, strategy is to guess, step two, is to plug it in, okay? So is it a good guess? The only way to find out is to stick it in there. So here it is, so we just plug it into this equation. Minus k <coughs> times x, a sine bt plus c has to be equal to the mass times the second derivative of this function with respect to time. So the derivative of sine uh, would be you pull out a b because you have to take the derivative of this thing with respect to time and multiply by it. So one b comes out and sine goes to cosine. And then on the next derivative, cosine goes to negative sine and another b comes out. So you end up with that negative sign. The a is along for the ride. You get two b's, so b squared, and then back to sine. bt plus c. So was it a good guess? Well, it's a good guess if this is true, okay? Is this true? Well, let's see, we can start canceling things. We can cancel the sign. We can cancel the a, and the two minuses go away and become plus. And we see it's a good guess if uh, b squared is k over m, okay? 
So basically, it's a good guess if b is the square root of k over m. And we learned another thing is that a and c can take any value. So I like to think of it as talking to the equation of motion. Okay? The equation of motion is like the wise old equation that has all the answers. Okay? It literally has all the answers are mathematically built into the equation of motion. You just pick an answer that you like, and you ask the equation of motion, is this any good? This is the equation of motion's response. It's good if b in your equation takes a specific value. And this is specific because these are properties of the system. k is the spring constant. m is the mass. a, b, and c are just things I made up. Okay? k and m are special. They're in the equation of motion. They're physical things. So the equation of motion's answer is, yes, it's fine as long as your b takes this specific value, square root of k over m. A and C, it doesn't care, any value. Okay. So let's look at this equation, this solution that we have constructed in ansatz and uh, see what it means. <laughs> 